Okay, returning from a holiday weekend, we are going to uh, continue with our poster designs. And so, as always, we could look through the unit modules and see, you know, all the past student examples and remind ourselves of all the things we're trying to demonstrate, master, understand, get introduced to with unit 12, where we're adding type design to our spot illustrations to make full poster compositions. We're designing them at 16 by 20 inches at 350 pixels per inch. That means that these are really, really good candidates for printing as large as we're able to print in the lab and really good candidates for the student art show that is taking submissions by the end of this week. So printing for that will be something we do uh, in today's class or Wednesday's class, right? If you have files you hope to submit to the student show. And just like these past student examples, you want to see lots of different tastes. You know, this is a way to showcase your interest, whether it's more in typography, more in flat graphics, more in kind of textured graphics and traditional painting, inking, lettering styles, or in some sort of mix of experimentation. We can composite backgrounds. We've, we've modified from existing type. We've made our own type. So this is where we are with the project. And this will be due next class. All components. And those components will definitely be at least these th three things. And then I'd like to see your blocking sketch too, your text blocking sketch. So black text design, color text design, and then the finished poster design with your spot illustration integrated. So we're all using the same phrase, this work in progress phrase. So just quick reminder, text blocking, which should always come first, is understanding how you want your type to interact with your illustration. This became my more kind of straightforward text blocking sketch. And then eventually, in playing with it, decided I didn't want to layer on the the in on top of the illustration and I adjusted. So by the end of last class we had finished in the demo with our black type solution and we'd finished it as a vector whether you draw it and then image trace it to get it to be a vector or whether you're able to just build it all within Illustrator and get it to be a vector. Uh, a vector gives you the most flexibility. So now when I open up the project in my beautifully organized folders for assignment six. I've got a lot of stuff here for the different text design, but what I'm looking for is my EPS, the one that shows my text, and I, I split it into two different ones as a vector, and then I'm looking for my layout. So my PSD, and usually I'll have that marked as green just to make it easier to find as we're doing so many things. So let me open that up in Photoshop. And now let's understand what we're looking at. So I'm going to turn off the background, and I'm only going to turn on these EPS files, which I can tell are the EPS files because they are smart, smart objects that I brought in. And that means that when I look at them, so this is the one for work, they are going to perfectly scale to whatever resolution I give to the pixel space. And this resolution is, I can always check under image, image size, 16 by 20 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So that's going to give us the best kind of print quality. At this stage, since I've already posted my, my blocking sketches, I don't really need anything left, because these get to be really large files, except for my smart, object, my smart objects. So I don't need my test files, I don't need any of these ones where I manipulated the raster type, the screen grabs from Defont, all I need are the smart objects that come either from my finished spot illustration from assignment five, 
to do. Or interesting. Yep. Or from my vector type that we finished off last class. So this is the last thing I don't need. So it might seem strange, right? That I have work here and I have progress here, but that's because I need to position this where I want it still. Because I did them as two separate EPS files. Now one trick in Photoshop is you can hold down shift as you move a file and it will lock it on an axis. So because I'm moving it up and down, it will lock it on that vertical axis. You can see those kind of pink lines. And then I can just kind of set it in. And then if it's making too strong a jump with your movements, you can always zoom in and then you can have more control. And I like to use the arrow keys. This is called nudging. And then why did I keep work and in progress separate instead of one EPS that had the spacing already between them? It's so I can finish this typesetting and maybe give it a little bit more space so it's not quite so cramped above and below, especially because I might want to add things like strokes and different effects to this type as I color it. And right now we're just on a blank background. So the next thing I'm going to do before I color the type, because that's looking good, and I can save it at this point, because I've already posted my other steps. So before you delete these from your Photoshop file, make sure you post, you can just do screen grabs of your progress. All right. So we got to here. That's an EPS. I can help you guys remind you how to do that. But remember, we have the YouTube videos that have gone through that. So whether we vectorize it using uh, image trace in Illustrator or whether we just use the type tools within Illustrator and then create outlines around them. Those are different ways to get vector type. Or you can always draw them yourself in Illustrator. All right. Now... I'm going to start thinking about the poster layout. Now to do that, what I want to do is actually fill the background. So I'm going to create a new layer. And just like for our spot illustration, I'm going to fill this background layer with white. Then I'll duplicate that and I'll fill a second background layer with middle gray. And then I'll duplicate that and I'll fill a third background layer with black. So if it look, can look good on white, gray, and black, then I've got a good type solution. And right now, my type does not look so good on black because black on black is hard to read, right? Looks okay on gray, looks cleanest on white. But now we're going to start with color variations on the type because remember the assignment. You start with a clean black shape solution, but then we want to start adding color, just like we did with our logos. And this can be a combination of digital coloring and using layer styles. So I'm going to rename, or I'm going to put my type together into a folder, since I have it separated into two different vectors, right? And I'll call this vector black type. And how do you get that vector black type in there? You use your EPS files. I want to identify all of mine. So they're the green ones. I have my work one and I have my in progress one. And you just drag and drop that EPS into your image. And then you can size it. You can rotate it. You can even free transform it. You won't be allowed to warp it. You won't be allowed to do certain things with an EPS because it's going to keep its clarity no matter what. Right? 
some of the advantages of having vector types. But if you try to open your EPS in Photoshop directly, it will force you to rasterize it. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is not only will it force you to rasterize it, it will tell you the default mode of an EPS file out of, out of Illustrator, of a vector file. And that default mode is called CMYK mode, which is different than the default mode of Photoshop, which is RGB mode. And so also today, we're going to learn a little bit about those two things. CMYK black is lighter, warmer, and grayer <laughs> than RGB black. So what is the difference? Well, RGB mode, which you'll see is in the title description whenever you're doing a Photoshop file, because that's the default mode, stands for red, green, blue. And those are the red, green, and blue lights that create the millions of colors in our screens, that create each pixel. CMYK is for printing. And that's the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks that are printed on white paper to give you the illusion of full color. But RGB has millions of colors, CMYK has thousands of colors, right? So until we are printing and want to see previews of, of print output, what are called print proofs, we don't need to limit the colors to CMYK, even though Illustrator's default mode is to do that. Because Illustrator is about making kind of clean shapes of solid colors. So to add color to my type, what I'm going to do, just like I did before, is I'm going to duplicate the vector black type and instead call this my vector color type. Now, in order to keep it a vector, I don't want to rasterize it. I want to keep these always as smart objects from the EPS. So what am I able to do? Well, I can either do individual layer styles on each letter. So color overlay is a good way to start, right? It's to show you, you can fill in the color completely. Or I can do it on the whole folder that contains them and that will apply to everything within that folder. So that can save some time. And I might start by doing it that way. Also, I want to show you once you set a layer style, right now that has a color overlay of white. Let me change it back to red. Say, okay, okay. You can right click on that layer and you can actually say copy that layer style, which allows you then to paste it onto other things like the folder so that they match. And for good measure, I might as well paste it here as well. Sometimes you have to scroll down. So that means even if I turn it off for the folder, it's still on for each individual one. <laughs> but if I turn it off for each individual one and then turn it on for the folder, it's on for all of them. It's, it's only doubling up because it's the exact same effect on each one. But this is where this can be helpful. What if I try a color overlay on the folder that is this, right? And instead of being normal at 100%, I do it at, you know, around 50%. So now that will be added to the ones underneath. So you see how that color is different than that color. And that's because there's red showing underneath that green. So you just have a lot of flexibility while keeping them as vectors. And I actually like this kind of complex, weird brownish color. Brown can be the hardest thing to select from the actual color selectors, they are there, the browns, but they are really hard to kind of comprehend. So sometimes blending multiple fills together can give you the effect you want. All right, so I would start to colorize your type by choosing a color overlay, just something to get you started. And I kind of like this one. I like that better than the green. I like it better than the red. It it doesn't overpower the illustration, right? But it supports it. I like it better than black. And I guess it's always good to be able to just turn everything off and see what the black type was doing, which could work as a solution, but this works a little bit better. So then I want you to choose your background. Okay, so wait, you turned off the, the folder. Yeah. Okay. 